garage sale time you gotta guard the treasures while we go out and find some more all right bye daisy see you later <laughs> all right everyone so we are starting off the day heading over to a barn sale now this is a nice old area sold we've got a nice old cemetery near here as well so hopefully we could find some nice vintage stuff. Now this is pretty cool. It's right across from the cemetery. So you can see right there, looks like lots of goodies inside of there. Wow, that's pretty big. Let's go check it out. All right, so I started off by looking under the table and I came across these two cool Halloween signs. We've got deadly drinks and then we've got Dusty Graves Diner. <laughs> that's so cool. So. This is a great time to be listing Halloween stuff, although it does sell all year round, but only 50 cents a piece. I've already sold them for 20 bucks. All right, now under another table, there were these packages of vintage Halloween lights. They come in strings of 10. There are three packages that are pumpkins and three that are ghosts. They only wanted two bucks a piece. So I had to see if they would work. So I went through each box, attached all the plugs to the outlet, and as you can see, the lights turn on, and that was the case for every single one of the items. They all worked. I was super pumped up, and they even had some extra bulbs. So these comp for between $20 and $25 a box, so I listed all of them at once for $125. All right, so here we've got a box of sneakers, only five bucks a pair, and laying on top are these black Converse All-Stars, also known as Chuck Taylors. They've always sold well throughout the generations. They have the same design, and this is size 11, uh, common size in men, so that's great. Um, you know, the black has some fading on it, but that's okay. It'll still sell. The main issue is that there's some dirt on the front of the sneakers, so we've got to find a way to clean that off. At the most basic level, you know, what you would do is just take a paper towel, just dampen it and, you know, put a little dishwashing detergent or some soap on it and then just, you know, rub the front of the shoe with it and see how much that takes out of there. So, you know, you could see here just rubbing it on there and it's not really doing what I wanted to do. It's still leaving all that stuff here. In fact, you know, if you look there, it's not really taking much off. We'll try this one here. You, know, you can see, I'm just gonna rub it. And, you know, it's not really doing anything. I'm putting some elbow grease into it, but not really doing much. So, in this instance, what I like to do is use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. All right, well, despite the name, there's nothing really magic about the Magic Eraser. All it is, is a foamy substance that contains melamine. Now, melamine is just a nitrogen-rich organic compound that is a strong abrasive. They use it in dry erase boards, and it is very powerful, but again, it's not magic. All you have to do is wet the sponge, like that. Just squeeze it, and that will help activate that melamine that's inside of it and we're just going to rub it on the shoe and erase it does a really good job because it is so abrasive getting that stuff right out of there just no way that you are going to get those kind of stains out of there with uh, just simple soap and water i mean look at that it's just so much better so now we're gonna to go to the other one. Again, I'll bring this close so you can see it right there. See how dirty that is. I'm just gonna rub it. It just gets it nice and clean. Uh, you can pick these up at your local grocery store. Many of you have used them before, so you know what I'm talking about. But if you're new, 
uh, you get six of these sponges for like 550. So it's totally worth it because this is really gonna help make the shoe shine. You know, and while I'm at it, I mean, it's no big deal, but you know, I'm just going around the sides a little bit too. Just a light little rub around it and uh, you know, that'll just help spiff it up a little bit too. All right, we're all set and time to list them. All right, now these shoes have sold for about $60 new. They have sold for about $50 pre-owned, which is how I have them listed right there. All right, some great things about this pair of sneakers is that they're Nike, which is the most popular brand to resell. They're Camouflage, which is also popular. Uh, they're size 10.5, and they're in great condition. Always look for the label with the ID number inside the shoe. Uh, fakes normally won't have that, or they'll have the wrong number. The problem here is all this gunk, so we got to get that out because these comp for great money even pre-owned, so we got to do something about that gunk. Now, you don't want to try picking this stuff out with your fingers, that's for sure, especially if it's dog doo-doo, <laughs> you don't want to deal with that. Um, a lot of people will try like a toothpick, and yes, you know, you could get somewhere with that, but the stickier it is, the harder it is to do, and your toothpick is going to start snapping. So what you need to do is do what the pros do. You need to go and you need to pick out a dental kit. That's right, a dental kit right here. I love using this, has a scalpel and everything like that in there. So, uh, you know, it has little covers for them too. So you just take one of them out right here. And now, you know, you could pretend that you were a dental hygienist because you could get right in here and just get this stuff out really uh, easily. You know, just be careful you don't poke yourself, but uh, there you go. Now this stuff is gonna just start flying out. You know, try to scalpel. Again, I'll have a link to that down in the uh, description section uh, of the video, but you can see this stuff is already already just flying out like that. There you go, see? Now you wanna be careful when you're doing this that you don't poke a hole through the rubber of the sole because that would obviously be a big problem. So you have to use a little bit of finesse and touch when you're doing this. Now this approach is best if you're dealing with sticky and gunky stuff like you know, in here, there's all sorts of like pebbles and rocks that are embedded within like a sticky material. But if you're dealing with a light, just kind of caked on, you know, dirt, that's it. All you have to do with that is just use a toothbrush and, you know, some soap and just rub it off with a soft bristle brush. So what the heck was in this shoe anyway? Well, for that, we've got to turn to Dr. Baron Von Caron. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so you can see here all of the various substances removed from the base of the shoe from the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Now, when we go over here, you can see that as I poke on this one with the scalpel that uh, this is a hard substance. Uh, you refer to it as a pebble. It has a little bit of dirt powder on it. Uh, but in science, we refer to this as a calcium carbonate. So we move that back here. And then over here, um, as I push uh, the scalpel down, you will see that this is a different, this is a little sticky substance here. Uh, we refer to this in a science as a bubbleless gummyus. And uh, then we have uh, various little powders from uh, the dirt scattered all around. You never know what you're gonna learn around here. Now, we still have some more stuff stuck to the bottom of the shoe. We've got the main chunks and gunk and pebbles out, but we gotta get this stuff out. So for that, let me show you what we're gonna do. All right, so basically what you could see here is that I rubbed some creamy peanut butter on the bottom of the shoe. You know, just regular store-bought peanut butter. And just rub it over the spot, and then you're just gonna take a paper towel and you're just gonna smear it around. All right, so what I do at this point is I take a flat edge screwdriver and then I just start gently scraping parts of the insides so the peanut butter, see it will stick right there, you see that? It sticks to the, to the sticky part and it helps to pull it right out. Okay, now that I've gotten most of this off, what I'm gonna do to just try and get the rest of it out of there is I'm just gonna apply 
uh, pressure from a soft bristle brush and that'll get us closer to getting done with this. Wow, look at that, that is dramatically better. So we just have a few little isolated spots left that we just have to hone in on and uh, pick those out and then we should be all set. All right, so look at this. They are completely set, all ready to get listed. This was the shoe that didn't have a problem with it, and this was the shoe that had all that sticky stuff, dirt, and pebbles uh, inside of it. But uh, I'm very happy with how this came out, and now you know if you ever see something like this, the steps you could do to get this looking back to how it should so you can make some money off this. So now I have them listed for $99.99. All right, now t-shirts here were four bucks a piece, which is a little high, but I was willing to pay for it for this 3XL sleeveless shirt because it's a parody of Mickey Mouse wearing all this army gear. Uh, you're just not going to come across this shirt often because it's made by a company called Sacrifice MFG that doesn't exist anymore. So I have it listed for 50 bucks. People pay up to express their individuality. Now, I paid four bucks for this shirt. You saw me wear it in the prior clips because I just think it's hilarious. So I had to have it. All right, on to the next house. Now, in this blue house, everything is advertised as costing one dollar so let's take a look at what they got some of this stuff was just 10 for a dollar all right i can't believe that this is what my life has come to now i am sourcing teacups and saucers at garage sales but you know i'm trying to expand into new areas so uh this is one way to do it these sets can sell well now that might look like there was a little color fading around the rim there but that's actually uh what the design is supposed to look like and there are id numbers on the bottom which help you identify them when searching comps so nice bright floral designs and that's what drew me to them so I picked up the cup and saucer sets for a whopping 25 cents. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But uh, I'm excited to see what happens with these. This is how you do it. Expanding into new niches and niches. Just take little inexpensive experiments like this. See if it pays off. And then if it does, build off it from there. Cheers. All right, so someone's selling one of these for $25, so I took both of them and put a starting price of 50 bucks on it. All right, time to hit up yet another garage sale. All right, now in a recent video, I was talking to you about when you go to sales, you could come across guidebooks just like these, and I picked all these up, that could help you to learn about new subject areas and could just serve as helpful references for things like maker marks and, and brand names. That's a Fenton catalog right there. You know, you remember me sourcing those uh, Fenton salt and pepper shakers that I have listed there. Uh, that one, I have that, that one I got to list. That one's at 50 bucks. I got two watchers on it and I picked up the Depression uh, glassware book as well. All right, now I always say that when you break into new niches that you're going to make mistakes sometimes, and this is a good example of it. I picked up this uh, teacup and saucer set. It's Queen Anne Bone China. I got it for two bucks, and it would have been a good pickup if I had looked at it more closely. And what I didn't realize until I got back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters is that there is a crack inside. <laughs> Well, Miss Primetime just got a free teacup and saucer. Now, I made up for it with this amazing plate, the style of which is known as Fragonard, named after the artist who made these courting scenes on the plates. Now, this one actually has the artist's name on it, which you could see there. So I was really excited about this one. She wanted 10 bucks for it. There's the back. has a nice maker's mark on it. Tell you what I got it for. I cannot believe that I'm posing with this right now, but I uh, asked her what was the lowest she could go on the plate, and she said six bucks, so I got it for six bucks, and she was an elderly woman, and she told me that her mother owned this plate, so this plate goes back quite a ways. She was telling me that that uh, blue maker's mark there is a good mark, so I got to look into that, and I'm excited. Get this listed and see what happens with it. So I have it listed for $100 and it already has one watcher. 
All right, now here's a top secret primetime tip for you. If you ever see a house that's that colored blue, definitely check it out because that is not the color that a young couple would keep on their house. That's the color of a house of someone who is much older who's going to have some vintage goodies inside. But before we go inside, we need to check out these shirts. Yoo-hoo, prime time. Why don't you turn me over and unfold me? What the heck is that noise? Look behind the collar. I think I'll look behind the collar. I'm only a dollar. Take me home with you, prime time. Well, you know, she's only a dollar. I think I'll pick her up. Well, I listed it for 30 bucks. I have no memory of sourcing it. I feel like I was in some kind of trance or something. All right, now that I've cleared the cobwebs from my head, I do remember sourcing this Limoges plate. That's definitely uh, one to look for. You'll see it marked as such on the back. I picked it up for around $5 and have it listed for 50 bucks. All right, now this Currents canister was my favorite item of the day. I just love the look and feel to it. You don't come across these too often. It has a maker's mark on the bottom, which I'm not sure which one it is. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments section. But it has those nice pedestal feet, uh, beautiful floral design around three sides of it. doesn't have the lid anymore, but I got it for three bucks. And again, it's so difficult to find. You know, you could use it for a vase or you could just use it for decoration, but I have it listed for $50. Petey and I hope that you enjoyed the video today. Uh, before you go though, it is member spotlight time. I want to make sure that you check out the eBay store of Bob Martin. What? Oh, Bill Martin. Sorry, Bill Martin. Yeah, <laughs> Bill Martin. Stop hitting me. Uh, this is something that I do for all members. His link is in the description section, and it's also in the comment section as well. So uh, any member at any level, I will promote your store and uh, will also be in the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, which is just about at 27,000 members. And so you get pinned there for 24 hours and I ask people to go support you. And a lot of people make sales that way. So uh, if you like the video, make sure to you like, comment, and subscribe. And Petey and I will see you back at the next one, everyone. Daisy, what did you catch? What'd you catch? You looking like the boss there. What is that? A bunny rabbit or something? <laughs> what did you catch? I don't know what that is. What is this? Can I see? What do you got here? What do you got? Oh, look at that. You got a little lamb. <laughs> Daisy had a little lamb. Uh-oh, Daisy. What are you going to do? <gasps> what are you going to do? It fell down. Oh, where's your lamb? <laughs> Daisy doesn't play fetch. <laughs>